Hello Zebraherd, welcome back to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. In the last episode, we defeated another Titan Pokemon, and today we are heading over to another Team Star base, the Starfall Street Poison Crew base. Storming the Poison Crew's base, Atticus of the Navi Squad, of course, boss of Team Star's Poison Crew. Atticus is of middling strength among the Team Star bosses. A descendant of ninjas, or so he believes, he likes to dress the part and use fancy speech and poison skills to toy with foes. So we'll have to use a lot of different moves here if we want to get rid of that, but I think we can handle it. Here's hoping. We still have a little bit more to travel to actually get there though, so we'll have to put in some work in today's episode, but I'm definitely looking forward to what we call lots of Pokemon in the last one. So if we find some more, this time that'll always be cool, but I'm going to get a revive right there. A lot of the Pokemon around here seems like we've already gotten, which is I know, a good thing in my opinion, because these ones have been tough to catch because they're so low level. Heat Rock, an item to be held by a Pokemon when the holder changes the weather. I guess something happens. Interesting. Um, For now, yeah, we're just sort of following along this main path for a good while. Oh, but there's a place to heal up our Pokemon. Get some sandwiches and stuff, that would be great. I don't need any of you. All these Pokemon, we've already caught them. But it would be cool just to throw out our Pokemon to fight them. Remember that that gives us extra experience and stuff still. So definitely worth doing. But uh, the Traveling Pokemon Center, here to serve. Oh, this is not a picnic thing. Hello there, it's your friendly Traveling Pokemon Center. Here to heal your Pokemon. Well, thank you very much. It's pretty dry and dusty out here. Don't you get dried out now. I will, I really appreciate it. And I did hear the jingle of a Gimme Ghoul coin. So we'll get two more there. And there's so many Pokemon over this way that we should just throw out um, Link alone again. Fight out some more of them. But while you're doing that, I'm just gonna take a good look around and see if there's anything else to find. There is over this way a Voltorb. So let's try to fight, fight the Voltorb. I think we call you by surprise. Hard to tell, but we're just gonna try putting you to sleep because if not, you're going to self-destruct and that's not really gonna be very useful. But you can see the Team Star Camp in the distance. Exactly what we're after. But using Swift against us, which doesn't do very much damage at all. So this is where we just start chucking our Pokeballs at you and seeing if we can't get a catch. All right, well, there we go. It didn't work. <laughs> we're, we're fine now, don't worry about it. Now you're Susan, this is our chance. There's no way you're gonna be able to do self-destruct now, right? Come on, come on, come on. No way, come on, this thing is so ridiculous. It is still sleeping and we can't get it. And if I attack it at all, it'll just do too much damage. Okay, that time for sure. All right then, the critical catch coming in, Voltorb was caught. All right then, so some extra experience there and Got number 207, Voltorb, the ball Pokemon is an electric type. It's usually found in power plants. Easily mistaken for a Pokeball, it has zapped many people. It definitely looks like a Pokeball. We're gonna send it to the box for now. And there we go, another Pokemon in our Pokedex. I think that does evolve into Electrode or something. Voltorb to Electrode. Doug Trio, I don't, I don't need to deal with this right now, but if you really wanna fight, let's go for it. We will just do a Headbutt. Are you gonna do Sucker Punch first? Really just gotta be a problem for me, don't ya? So I'm got arena trap. So I need to fight you anyways. We can't run from this one. <laughs> so silly. There, if that's what you truly wanted, you got it. So with all of that done, all these other Pokemon in the area we've already caught. So I just need to heal up our Pokemon again so we can continue down the path. All right then, so we're good there. We got ourselves another Pokeball and another Gimme Ghoul coin. So we wanna get a Zap of Pico now. That'll be cool. Definitely we'll check that out. But in the meantime, plenty of other goodies to get. Super Potion. We didn't do any terror raids last episode, unfortunately. Just none really popped up. So if I see that opportunity today, I definitely want to go for it. So another super potion there and an elixir. I do see one right down this way, or at least some kind of terrestrialized Pokemon. Ooh, what will this be? It is super shimmery. I'm very curious. Whoa, what is, oh, we've, we've seen this before. So let's just try for it. Um, That wasn't close enough. Yeah, we've seen you before, I think in Sword and Shield, right? So cool. It's sort of multiple Pokemon in one. As you can see, it is. Whoa, the Terrasilize. What's hyping now? Steel? That looks like Steel to me. Oh, it definitely is. So the Steel Terrasilize, whatever it's called. Come on, come on. Uh, Phalanx, I remember now. So we'll use Yawn against you right away. Just to be prepared for that. 
but we need to damage it down to break the terrestrialization anyways. So these usually aren't too bad to catch, but that does do some super effective damage. It is a lot lower level than we are, so that battle armor is gonna go away. Okay, battle again. Let's just use headbutt. It's a level 30. That's pretty good, but it's not very effective. Okay, never mind. So, so maybe just use dig this next time. It flinched though, so it couldn't move. They links fell asleep. Let's um, battle with dig. So we're gonna burrow underground. This should definitely do all the damage we need. Cause it's fighting type. Maybe fighting ground, fighting steel, something. I mean, technically right now it's a steel type. That's right. Uh, I always forgot. <laughs> There we go, super effective. That should break the terrestrialization. This is where we throw our Pokeball. And just catch this thing. You know, they were falling all over the place. So, battle, great ball. Come on. This has gotta be it. All right then, so, as you can see, we get a bunch of experience and we catch a terrestrialized phalanx, a formation Pokemon fighting type with the ice terrestrialization. The leader, known as the Brass, uses its extendable horn to issue orders to the others when it's time to change formation. Very nice, so we'll send you to a box, but almost 10 feet in length. Pretty crazy, I forgot the bug in my controller. So now we're back to it, and ooh, I do see a Treadnought down that way, and a Basculin, which we definitely caught the Basculin before, but we will try for this Treadnought really quickly. Cause that is something we haven't caught. We've, we've caught Choodle, but not Dreadnought. So, let's see, I might just try to put you to sleep to begin with. But then, hopefully it won't be too bad of a catch, right? And there aren't any other Dreadnought around that I see, so I do wanna be very careful about how we damage this thing. Lingering Aroma now. So maybe we could just throw some Pokeballs to get an easy catch that way. I could try a Nest Ball with being lower level, but at the same time, I don't know if it'll do enough. Because what does it mean by lower level? Lower level compared to us, or just lower level in general? Is there a threshold somehow? I'm not really sure, but Jednal was caught, and that's a lot of experience, and another Pokedex entry. Number 58, Dreadnought. The bite Pokemon is a water rock type. Dreadnought lurks along the shoreline. When prey come to drink water, Dreadnought stretches its neck out and chomps down on them. Oh my goodness. Very intense Pokemon for sure, but we'll get it right there, number 58. Let's definitely grab that and then jump over all this, please. Thank you, that was a pretty smooth move. And look at this, another Gimme Ghoul coin. Now, jumping back over this way. I don't even know what we do with the Gimme Ghoul coins, but there is you over there. Have I caught you? I've not. Let's go for this one. This is something we've seen in other Pokemon games, Barboach. Battle, yawn, and then we'll throw out another Nest Ball, or maybe even the Net Ball, because it is a water type, right? I'd imagine, I'd hope. <laughs> you never know anymore. Uh, so let's try a Net Ball, not a Nest Ball. Come on, what are our chances with this one? We'll just jump out straight away, or we'll be caught. It'll be caught, nice! Barboach was caught. Okay, so a little bit more experience, but more than that, another Pokedex entry. This time, Barboach, number 168, the Whiskers Pokemon, a water ground type. It probes muddy riverbeds with its two long whiskers. A slimy film protects its body. Awesome. Okay, so, boom, we got it, 168. Oh no, we're falling. I need to jump and land over this way to grab that one Pokeball, but then we're good to skedaddle out of this area. I guess back on the path to, um with a dive ball. Catching Pokemon in or on the water? Gotcha. And there's a little, uh, what's it called? We've already gotten that, so don't have to worry about it. Back on this path, I wanna go over to that one city that we saw. And that'll also help us get to a Pokemon Center. There's a lot of good things in store with that, but I also see a trainer to take on. Tick tock, tick tock. Clock is ticking. Come on, let's have a battle of luck. Maybe they have Meowth? Backpacker Lander. And let's see what they have. Impidimp, gotcha. So I think could probably handle that. I think normal type might be good against it, but we'll find out in a moment. Found it soft sand. Can I have that back, please? Uh, 
There we go, one hit takedown. That's what we want to see. And there we go. So, not quite a level up, but pretty close there for Floatzel. Is your luck good, or is mine just bad? I'm so sorry. But I don't think it has to do with luck, it just has to do with the uh, preparation. Metronome is a move that leaves everything to luck, so it wasn't my skill that failed me. You're sure about that, but you know what? Why not work both on luck and skill? Ooh, there's a TM right down that way. We'll get some Roly Coly Coal. Psychic Terrain, I guess is something we've gotten before. Hmm. Right over here, though. Look what I spot. Another Pokeball with a Timer Ball. So, if a battle goes on for long enough, that'll be nice. There's something on the ground right there. The Stardust, I definitely want to sell that. We are getting closer to the, uh, Whoa, oh, there's a little diglet, and I'll have to fight it, because if not, it'll just keep us stuck here, so let's just go for it. Quick headbutt. Gotcha. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, what was I saying? We're getting pretty close to the uh, Team Star Base. I'll do what I can to take that on, but for right now, I see you over here, and I definitely want to battle you, so everything here is so rugged. So are we, so be ready. Seems rough and rugged places like this attract a lot of hardy Pokemon, huh? I guess so. You're challenged by Lorenzo the student. They have Finian. Sonic alone's not the best against it, but I think we'll handle it, because they're probably lower level yet, level 25, so a headbutt should do quite a lot of damage. Maybe even make them flinch. Didn't even need it. Okay, we're fine. So. Lots of experience, level 40 for Floatzel, and they're sending out Quillfish. You know what, for fun, we'll switch over to, um, let's do Miascarada. It's good against water types, and we haven't been using it too often recently. So, I think switching that up a little bit, I could have used Palma, and that would have been just as good, but we've been using Palma a ton, I feel like, the last couple of episodes, so I just want to switch it up a bit more. Okay, so battle, let's use Flower Trick for that guaranteed critical. All right. And boom, a critical hit. It's out to what we want to see. Quillfish is fainted. And there we go. Almost level 41 from Yaskarada. Wow, the trainers are hardy too. I guess so. If I want to find soft, fluffy Pokemon, should I look at a flower meadow or something? I mean, I actually, I think so. I think you're, you're right on the money with that kind of thought process. Anyways, here we are at the, the city or whatever this place is supposed to be. This is Zapapico. So I guess we'll talk to you first. We've battled a couple of trainers along the way, but maybe not enough to make you happy. I'll have to see. Six trainers. That's gotta be, no, come on, seven trainers? There's always one more than what, what I have so far. So I'll have to look out for another trainer soon. But in the meantime, we're just gonna heal up. And as per usual, I'll check to see if they sell quick balls because that'll make everything so much easier. But hey, look at this, everybody's gonna heal up. And with that done, Link alone and the rest of your team should be a little bit more ready to go. What do we have? Ultra balls, heal balls, nest balls, a lot of great stuff, even more of those dive balls. But nothing too much more. I definitely wanna get a couple of these, just in case we find a really cool Pokemon that's on the water. So there we go, nine more dive balls for us. And we should have a couple of things to sell. Because we found a pearl last episode, a big pearl. That'll be 4,000 in and of itself. So let's also get Stardust sold and a rare bone. Cool. So lots of money coming in there. We still have a lot more that we can earn up, of course, as we adventure forward. So let's get back to that. So if we take a look at the map now, the only problem is I'm a little far off, I guess. I probably just want to cut across. What is that little teacup Pokemon? Can I find that anywhere? That'd be fun. And we'll just sort of make our way over throughout the East Province and see if I can't spot that thing. I'm seeing lots of different Pokemon, but not quite that one. It just sort of means that they have a chance to show up, but not that they necessarily will. It's a bit odd in that way. But I'll just look around a little bit, because I want to find new ones like that for sure. I'm not seeing anything over here, though. Yeah, we're back at Zapapico over this way. I don't know if there's too much we need to do at the town of Zapapico. Okay, I'm not seeing too much. I think we'll head out of here in just a moment. Oh, the blue ones. Have we caught the blue ones yet? I'm not sure. 
Not sure if it matters too much. Hmm. Okay, nothing new over here. I I'm going to sweep through one more time. If I don't see anything new, then we're heading off that way. There's still plenty of things to discover along the way, I'm sure. Not too many terror rates around here, though. I think there would be a little bit more often of those. But if I can make my way to the Pokemon Centers, that's also another big thing, because, you know, they'll be activated quick travels. But look at you over here. I want to battle you for sure, according to my calculations. What's up? I calculated it all, and I knew the likelihood you'd come talk to me was 100%. All right. Gerard the student. Seems pretty uh, cold and calculated. They have Lycan Rock. Awesome. Think we can handle it. We're just gonna hit you with a um, a dig. It'll be super effective, especially if we can get get onto the ground first. They'll definitely hurt once we get back up there. They'll try to bite us, but with us not being there, not too much of a problem now, is it? And boom. Super effective. And there we go. Uh, Scyther. Okay, Scyther's a bug flying kind of deal. Let's go Fletch, no, not Fletchinder, Talonflame. Ah, oh, it used to be Fletchinder. Okay, so Talonflame is here. There's Scyther. So we can use either of these. Which one has the most damage? It's still Aerial Ace. I definitely need to dig into the TMs to see what we can find. But that's enough against Scyther to defeat you pretty easily. Okay, so that is Gerard the student defeated. I failed to calculate my chances of winning. Oh no. Do you have lessons with M's? M's are missed time? Uh, they're really fun if you love math. Yeah, I, I need to do this, the, the actual lessons. A lot of you let me know that I, I didn't do it right, that I had to talk to the main person to actually start the lesson. So maybe we'll do that later today. It really depends on how much time we have left afterwards. But I'll go ahead and grab that, the Roly Coly Cole. And there's another trainer to take on right over here. Hey, hold up, would you? All right, what's up? Tag Tree Thicket up ahead isn't safe. You'll run into a bunch of delinquents. Well, that's exactly what I'm after. Jones by Veronica the student. They have Greedent. Okay, so I think we're fine. It's, it's normal versus normal here, so we'll just do a headbutt and see how much damage it does. Uh, good amount. They did not flinch though, so they're gonna stockpile. Stockpiled one, I forget what that does, but okay, it raises their defense and their special defense. But we just headbutt them again and they're done for, so it doesn't matter too much. And a critical, which it could have gotten on the first time. What is next? Level 41 for uh, Neoscarada Gum Shoes, which is another normal type, I think. So if we switch over to Palmot, we can just do a close combat. We haven't used this move yet, so it'll be fun. Even if it does lower our stats, those only last for the battle. We'll be back to normal for the next one. So it'll be okay. Okay, so here comes your gumshoes. Going against my Palmot. Let's see who wins. All right, that's super effective close combat. Whoa, that does so much. Super cool. Critical hit too, oh my gosh. Gumshoes is gonna faint from that one, and that'll be this trainer defeated. All right then, so you defeated Veronica the student. Wow, you're strong. I guess you didn't need my advice. I guess not, but you know, it's it was very thoughtful of you and I appreciate it. They're from a group called Team Star? People say they're delinquents, right? Not that they've done anything to me, mind you, but still. Anyways, let's see what's going on around here. I'm sure there's another Gimme Ghoul coin around. They almost always are. But we'll heal up over here. No, not the technical machine machine. Just this. So we'll heal up really quickly and we'll just keep moving towards that poison type um, Team Star base. We're, we're getting really close now. Okay. So. We're good to go. I hear it somewhere. Where is that Gimme Ghoul coin? 
There it is, found ya. <laughs> we'll have the Yuzu somehow eventually, right? I'm not sure yet how, but there's a poison terror raid over there. I'll grab this stuff. X accuracy, um, boosted Pokemon's accuracy in battle, of course. Some Diglett dirt, potions, cool stuff. But we're just going right down here, and look at this, a change of terrain. I think we're about to get a call from uh, Clive, maybe? Maybe we'll just meet them in person. Yep, here they are. Hi, Clive. Zebra. Uh, hi there, Clive. We'll play along. Glad to see you've got my name committed to memory. Now, let's pick up our conversation from where we left off before. As I mentioned, I joined Operation Starfall to resolve a sticky situation and to find out the reasons behind Team Star's odd behavior. Above all, I want to know why the students in Team Star have stopped coming to school. And just like Cassiopeia, I want the team to disband for good. Since joining Operation Starfall with you, I've already had some success in opening up a dialogue with Team Star, and I think I'm starting to understand things more clearly. But I don't have enough information just yet. That's why I want to speak with students from Team Star's other squads as well. If you intend to take on the, another base, know that you can count on me for backup. Till then, see you around, Zebra. He always says that, but he's always not really helping with them very much. <laughs> He'll just stand around while I do that. Oh, and there's even a fairy type one over here. And then there's a, uh, a Squalvent, but a Greedent we haven't caught yet. So let's try for that if I can. Did we get it? I think so. And what is that behind it? Whoa, that's a Pokemon I haven't seen before. So we got a couple of interesting things here. We're gonna start with a Yawn. And you're level 29, so a little bit higher. I think you can handle just doing a Headbutt or something. Greedent, you swallow. Oh, that too, but it failed. Maybe they had some food in their mouth when we, we attack them. Okay, well there you go. It's using rest, it's, it's also gonna be asleep. That's what I was gonna do to you. All right, well hopefully it's health doesn't restore right away. No, it is, it's gonna restore right away. That's fine though, I think it's, oh, all the way back up the full. So let's just do another headbutt. There we go, come on, this is our chance to catch uh, Greedon right here. It's asleep, it's in yellow with its health. Throw out, a great ball. Our chances are pretty decent with this one, right? And I definitely want to check out that fairy type terrestrialization, our terror raid. No way! You're sleeping, you're so low on health, you're jumping out of that one? Come on, we're trying again. Battle, great ball. Come on, come on. This has gotta be enough. There it is, it was just being difficult. Greedent was caught. And we get level 44 for uh, Link Alone. Number 30, Greedent, the greedy Pokemon, a normal type. This Pokemon makes off with heaps of fallen berries by wrapping them in its tail, which is roughly twice the length of its body. <laughs> you can see that, it's very ruffled, but it's so cute, so I love it. There we go, so right there, number 30. Wait, we haven't caught Squovid? Huh, we haven't caught school of it either. All right, well now's the chance to do that. This one's level 26, so it's about the same deal. We're just gonna battle you and headbutt. I didn't realize we hadn't caught school of it yet. That's too much. Great. All right, so not exactly what I was looking for. We'll try again. Um, I wanna try catching you before it's too late. Where, where are you going? What is this? I have no clue. Uh, it's so adorable though. It's like a little monkey in a way, or maybe like a lemur, Grafii. All right, go on, start things off. I might want to be gentle with this one because I don't see any others of these around. It's doing U-turn? The critical hit doesn't do very much. So no more poison touch for you. Let's just try throwing a great ball. It might not work. I'm not really expecting it to work too much. Yeah, it's gonna jump out right away. Now that it's about to fall asleep, maybe we should switch over to something like um, Doxbun. I don't know, I'll throw one more Great Ball. So I just don't wanna risk any of this other stuff, you know? Um, maybe we'll even try an Ultra Ball, just to be extra sure here. Come on, please catch. That's it, all right, we caught Graphii. 
which seems to be like a very graphical kind of monkey kind of deal, or lemur, like I said before. Uh, we get some Shrudel ink as well. Number two, 203, Graphite Eye, the toxic monkey Pokemon, poison normal type. Each Graphite Eye paints its own individual pattern, and it will paint that same pattern over and over again throughout its life. That's so cool. Definitely like that one. So poison normal type, going into our Pokedex, right there, 203. All right then, so I do wanna grab this, the Great Ball, and then back down this way, I think I spotted a couple new ones. We've got Shrudel there. What is this? Kamala. Okay, let's definitely get Kamala. There's a pink one down there I don't think I'm too familiar with. We're seeing some new Pokemon though, always so nice. Kamala is drowsing, but it's not asleep. Um, I'll try a headbutt. I'm a little nervous, this will be too much. It is, oh my goodness. All right, well, we fought another Kamala. I'll go for that one. I think that's an Impidimp running around. Do we have Impidimp caught? Yeah, we do. Impidimp was something we got from a Terror Raid, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so hopefully we can find more of the Koala things, but what about this? Whoa, I think we have you. It's Spite Ops. Another one of you. Okay. So let's try out this Terror Raid then. Um, in just a moment, hold on. Let me grab this. This is Guard Spec. So let's try this out. So this is Fairy type Terror Raid. I think Fairy's weak to Dark, right? So. Um, it's gonna be the Pin Kirchen again. Three stars this time. Let's try it with just Meowskarada. I think will be our best bet. So, right over here, Meowskarada, because we still have that um, Night Slash. And we'll challenge it alone. Okay, let's go for our first Terror Raid in a little while. So hopefully I'm not wrong about Fairy types being stronger, or Dark types being stronger than Fairy types. I'm pretty sure, but only one way to find out now. And that's why we have a nice backup here with our grass type moves still being really good. We have guaranteed criticals and stuff, so I think overall we'll be fine. Uh, this is our first time seeing the fairy type Terrastalize little headpiece out. It's a little heart with wings. I like it. Okay, it's not very effective. Okay, so I do get it mixed up. It is what it is, though. We'll just use Flower Trick. It'll do a lot of damage. I hope. It's a critical hit, so maybe not a lot of damage, but this is where we have time on our side. If we just keep hitting it, oh, that's super effective though. So maybe I used, made a huge mistake, we'll see. But it is what it is, you know? If we have to brute force it. If we have to try another time with a different Pokemon too, like, that's fine. Okay, that time it didn't do any damage. I guess I tried an electric type move there. That's a little interesting. Um, We'll do another flower trick, and we already have it just about halfway down with that attack, so. If things go bad here, it's fine. Not very effective. It stopped using the effective moves. Nullify the stat changes and abilities affecting your side. That's fine, because now we can terrestrialize and use Flower Trick again. Maybe I should have healed first, but I think we'll be all right. And then we'll do another Flower Trick. It should do a lot more damage. We're getting pretty close here to defeating it. We still have so much more time, which is all that really matters, as long as we're not burning through a ton of time. Come on. Ooh, that was great. It's using Spark again. That time it did do a lot more damage, but still not enough. We're paralyzed. But if we can just fight through that for one more attack, we'll be in a great spot. Come on. You got it, awesome, a critical hit again, of course, it's guaranteed, and that should be this pink Kirshen defeated. So we just gotta throw that Pokeball and catch it. So obviously, we already have this Pokemon caught, so in that way it's not too exciting, but it's a three-star battle, so it should give us a ton of rewards. We haven't found a four-star battle just yet, I don't think, but I can't wait until we find one. All right then, so. Here we go, we got it. Pink Kirchen was caught. So that was a bunch of little extra stuff there. Some of those feathers I definitely need to use soon, but there we go, we got it done. So number 321, Pink Kirchen. We don't need to read this because we already did just last episode, or maybe it was earlier this episode, I can't remember. No, I think it was last episode. Uh. We'll grab this, the, the uh, Ultra Ball, very nice. So Navi Squad's base is right over this way. I'm a little bit nervous about our team's health though. Maybe I should, oh, it's saying that there's some new Pokemon around that I haven't seen yet, but they pop out, we'll definitely grab them. 
I just want to just make sure that you are auto healed. Now we're good. So we'll probably be using the dig move a lot. What do we got here? Nothing new, nothing new. I will grab this experience candy XS. Oh, and fungus, right? I think. Yep, fungus. So we will just, I think with you being at the level you are, make you sleepy. That should be good at first. There's also another uh, fungus over that way. So if this one doesn't work out, we can try for that one. All stat changes were eliminated, but I don't think drowsiness is a stat change. We should be fine, but either way, we're still just gonna try for catching it. And we get it anyways. That's what we wanna see. All right then, so. Yep, some Fungus Spores there, and that'll be another Pokemon for a Pokedex. Again, this time is number 205, Fungus, the Mushroom Pokemon, a Grass Poison type. This Pokemon prefers damn places. It spurts out Poison Spores to repel approaching enemies. All right, very cool to get that. That's also one that'll evolve a couple of times, I'm pretty sure, or at least, yeah, it'll evolve once, so we'll definitely have to get that at some point. Um, But you know what, I think we're pretty set up. Let's make our way over towards the base. So let's take on these two trainers waiting for us right over here. Do me a favor and go home already, will ya? No, I wanna see the boss of the Navi Squad. Take me to Don Atticus. Like I said, kid, the boss told me not to let any outsiders pass these gates. That includes you. I don't care. I'm not leaving till you let me talk to Don Atticus. Give me a break, you little doofus. People over there seem to be arguing about something. What do you wanna do? Uh, let's go say hello. Maybe we can help? Uh-huh. Oh great, here comes another rando to ruin my day. I didn't think grunt work of Team Star Newbies would be this much of a chore. Hold on, Mr. Grunt. I think this boy might be Zebra. Wait, Zebra? That kid who picked a fight with Team Star? Yep, that's me. I knew it. Oh boy, this ain't good. Everyone else in the base is still asleep since we were up all, la all last night playing video games. Even the me, Mr. Grunt, I'll buy some time for you to go wake up the others. Whose side are you on? Yeah, what's in it for you? Not Atticus will be in danger if no one's here to defend the base. I owe that man my life. He he's my dear compadre. And when crisis calls, one has no choice but to rally to those dear to him, no matter the cost. Yeah, I have no idea what you're on about, kid, but thanks for the big assist. So I guess we're battling this one student for now. All right, you villain. If you're after Don Atticus, be prepared to face my wrath. Wait a sec. Discretion is the better, or discretion is the better part of valor, as the saying goes. All right, well, I guess we'll take you on. Oh no, I guess I, oh, that's what that says. The way to sec makes me have to, wait a second. I thought it was just, <laughs> Never mind. All right, you villain, grab the Don Atticus, bring it on. I thought we'd get more of a conversation on that. Yeah! All right, so let's battle this student, or however it might be. You were challenged by Pokemon trainer Yusef. All right. They have Gulpin. Whoa. I think we might have called Gulpin before. Can't quite remember at the moment, but we'll just take you on here, battle, and I think yeah, we can use Dig against you. Didn't I heal Inkalon just a moment ago? I guess we called another Pokemon since then. We're using Stockpile, but I think that our Dig will do enough. Even if their defense rises and their special defense. Come on, super effective, one hit takedown on the Gulpin. That's what we wanna see, for sure. Shrudel, all right, Shrudel, I think, have we not seen Shrudel? I'll just switch over to Masquerada. It'll do something. Worst case scenario, we use U-turn. I thought we've seen Shrudel. I don't know why it's not telling me what's good or bad against it. Hmm. So let's see for ourselves. What is Shrudel? Yeah, it's this thing. I have this in Claw. Why didn't it tell me what's, I thought it does that on the thing, but I guess not. I guess we'll just use Night Slash for now. And it's still enough for a one hit takedown. So we're great. I love this area, by the way, like the coloring of the trees and stuff. Very nice that they just like painted it all. But we defeated Pokemon Trainer Yusef. 
I talked bit big, but I'm no warrior. I think you fought pretty valiantly. Don Atticus, I'm sorry I failed you. Zebra, are you all right? I was standing watch when I heard a ruckus all of a sudden. I got worried that maybe something bad had, or something had happened to you over here. Ugh, no fair, you had backup this whole time? Is this boy one of the Academy's students? He doesn't look like he's from Team Star. You're right, I'm not a member of Team Star, but Don Atticus is my compadre. I have to see him no matter what. Well, clearly you have your reasons for being here. Zebra, I'd like to ask this boy some questions. You go ahead and get started on the base. Might I borrow you for a chat, my, uh, my man? Don't worry, I won't bite. All right, I hope that goes well. But we are gonna get a call, I'm guessing, from Cassiopeia. Nice work dealing with the guard. Within that base lies Team Star's poison crew, the Navi Squad. Their boss, Atticus, designs the outfits for the team. You could say he has clever hands. The guy's also a bit of an eccentric. You can never tell what he's going to do next. So, since it's beyond us to predict how he'll respond to our declaration of war, just take out as many of the squad's Pokemon as you can until Atticus shows his face. Ring the bell on the gates once you're ready to kick off this phase of the operation. Time to wipe the Navi squad off the map. Okay, well I think we're ready. I do hear that Gimmigle coin ringing over and over. It's driving me nuts, so please just go and cash that thing. And let's see what we can do. Um, I think we want to change position and get you here? I don't think it really matters too much. We can just do something like this and it should be fine. Um, all right then, let's go for it. Let's ring that bell and take on the Team Star Poison crew. All right, here we go. Ding, 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 let's get ready for our fight. So I'm guessing we'll have to do the same thing we always do, defeat 30 Pokemon within the time limit. Beep, Kurt. Seems that folks behind the Operation Star Fool are finally making a move against our base. You know what that means, gang? Time for us to shine bright and avenge our teammates. And hey, little one shooter, just so you know, if you got the skills to defeat 30 of our Pokemon in 10 minutes, our boss might deem you worthy to meet in person. Heh, <laughs> break a leg. Well, I'll definitely do my best. Defeat 30 of Team Star's Pokemon starting right now. Going against some Venonat, which we can handle pretty well, I think. So yeah, let's keep throwing out some more of them. We don't just need Oink Lone. Whoa, what is this thing? I've not even seen this. This looks like, I guess, the evolution of the, whatever it's called. I forget right now. We can even a couple more of them. I do see also over here. Hold on, hold on. While you guys are fighting. I see a <laughs> Gibby Cool Coin. I want it. Can I take it right now? I don't think I can. Not during this. Okay, so never mind. We'll just keep throwing out some of these guys. We haven't taken any damage yet. I also can't get on my thing. My, uh, my Mirai then. That's okay, we'll just keep doing this. And then over this way, got three more, actually four more. Cool, some Fungus, the evolution of Fungus, whatever its name is. Amoongus, gotcha. <laughs> All right, well, oh, look at these guys. That is, Seviper and Grimer defeated. We're more than halfway through. We've barely taken any damage, so this is looking really great for us. What about this set right here? Knock them out, no problem. Up to 20 out of 30, 10 more remaining. There's another group over here. Yep, I'll let you deal with them, just like that. And how's our health doing? Once again, we are all still basically full on health. Only Floatzel's taken any damage whatsoever, so. With six more left to defeat, we have another group of Seviper and a Grimer. Then over here, Sing Deal. Come on. Got it. A couple more defeated. And then these two Haunters should be good enough. Actually, only just one of them is all we need. Excellent. So there we go. We finished with defeating a Ghastly. We got 31 out of 30, actually, with some bonus. He's way above our level. We've got to get the boss. All right, well here comes the boss, the Poison Team Crew base member, whatever you want to call it. We read about them before. They're apparently a ninja? Sure looks like it. Whoa, boss of Team Star's Poison Crew, Atticus. 
Pray forgive my sudden entry. Tis I, Atticus. You're that scoundrel zebra, I take it. You have the some nerve bearing your fangs at Team Star. Come then, villainous wretch. A plunge into grim poison shall be your well-deserved fate. On guard. They don't really talk much. Is that what ninjas normally talk like? I don't know. I don't know many ninjas, to be honest with you, but this one does. Let's go for it. Oh boy. I love the cool moves. Nice backflip. Your challenge by Atticus of Team Star. Ooh, and they have Stunky to start with. Well, that's where we can use our dig move pretty well here. Not but punishment awaits thee, wretch. A plague on your house. Let's use Dig really quickly against Scun Tank. Not Sunky. Sunky is what it evolves into. Yeah, or I mean, other way around. You know what I mean? Anyways, we get that lingering aroma on Scun Tank. Certain moves can poison with a mere gaze. Tremble, scoundrel, for thy Pokemon's sake. And Oinkalone flinched from that one. So let's just try to dig again. Here comes that sucker punch. Please no flinching. Here we go. But I don't know if it'll actually work because they're sort of on a floating car, you know? We're trying it. There it is, a one hit takedown on Scun Tank. Beautiful. Scun Tank's gonna faint from that one. And Team Star's about to send out Muck. I will keep our current Pokemon and just try to dig again. Here we go. So this one has quite a few Pokemon to battle right away. So we'll go for this. Dig underground again. And if it works, it works, you know? The sludge wave is gonna miss because we are chilling underground. Here it goes. Ooh, really nice. So that's two of your four Pokemon defeated. What do you have next? Rev of Room. Same deal then. We'll keep recurring Pokemon and hit it with Dig. So this is uh, the evolution of what we saw before. Super interesting. And it seems very similar to you know, the, the car Pokemon. And it's it's sort of the same thing. I don't know if we can catch this big car Pokemon. Anyways, we're using Dig. We're way up there. How do we dig through the car? <laughs> That's so silly. And we got one more Pokemon left, right? Let's see what it is. You think to give me a taste of my own poison? Bye. I will fight on to the bitter end. So we got the full scale rev of room this time. The Navi Starmobile, level 32. We can handle it. We don't want to terrestrialize just yet because that would be normal type. The Noxious Torque does a little bit of damage. I don't know if terrestrializing and then using this dig move would do any more or less because right now we're a normal type using dig. Then we're just a terrestrialized normal type using dig. Let's just go for it and see how much damage we end up doing. Almost half of its health right there. So that's fantastic. Uh oh. We got the, the poison little debris there, the toxic debris. That's not gonna be good. But super effective again. Let's just dig when we get the chance. The Noxic Torque is going to uh, do some damage. Blink alone was poison. But they're holding on pretty well. We're underground. And let's hit him with another. Or Oink alone still getting poison down there. Noxus Torque again. We're just gonna avoid it. There we go. Oh no. Yeah, the, the spikes are scattered all around our team. So if we switch out Pokemon, I'm pretty sure they're guaranteed poisoned. Um, let's just see if we can get one more in. Oh no, it might not be enough. Oh, I'm so sorry, Oink alone. But it was really close. If we could just get a different Pokemon out to finish you off, that'd be huge. So let's see what our options are here. Nothing super effective, but that's all right. I think we'll just go with, um, with Palma here maybe? Or maybe we could just do Floatzel. Floatzel's probably strong. We'll try Floatzel and just hit it with everything we got. But it does get poison as soon as it's switched out. And we will just do Water Pulse. It's the most strong thing we have here. The Noxious Torque is gonna hit us again. And a critical this time too. But look at that, we are so close. Just one more hit should do the trick, but will we last that amount of time? Okay, hit it with another Water Pulse. That Torque really does hurt, but this might hurt a whole lot more. Come on! We got it, awesome! So Rev of Room has fainted 
And with it, I think we've just defeated Atticus of Team Star. Awesome. They're not happy about it. <laughs> All right, we did great. That was definitely a lot of Oink Alone's work. Forgive me, my friends. Oh, we're getting another flashback. About a year and a half ago. Forgive me. It looked, it took a goodly time to procure the required materials. Whoa, sick. These boots are insane. Ah, yes. The move flame charge was my muse for those particular pieces. This outfit is everything I imagined it would be. Thank you so much. I merely wish to create a costume worthy of the great Infernal Larry. If it aligns with your vision, then I am content. So this guy designs all the costumes, that's cool. Seems our outfit upgrades are all wrapped up then. Thanks a ton, Atticus. With you two looking like absolute beasts, anyone who crosses us will be sweating bullets. You're so good at these sorts of crafty things, Atticus. Those people bullying you because you geek out on uh, over old-fashioned stuff are out of their minds. The way of the ninja is rough and fraught with thorns. I neither expect nor desire sympathy from the unrefined rabble. Ooh, someone's getting fired up. Watch out, world, our Atticus has fighting words. Yeah, don't listen to the haters, Atticus. I think you're really cool. All right, gang, let's move on to the next tab. It's time to put our backs into the, our battle training so we're all prepped for Operation Star. We gotta be stronger than everyone else in the team. That's what being a boss means. Indeed it does. Henceforth, I will devote myself, heart and soul, to honing my battle skills. For the sake of the team, I would give my very heart and soul, but I cannot defy the rules. Our code must be obeyed. And so, this badge is mine to keep no more. I entrust it to thy care. So for defeating Atticus, we get uh, the Starfall Street Poison Badge. Atticus is really cool. All these characters, once we learn more about them, are so interesting that I feel bad for defeating them. Take this contraption too. It contains a technique that allows you allows one to cover their foes in gunk. You gain T102, Gunk Shot. Gunk Shot, the user shoots filthy garbage at the target to attack. This may also poison the target. Zebra is thy name, is it not? You have utterly bested me, but thy victory stirred no bitterness within me. Such was its brilliance. Don Atticus, my compadre? It seems this little fella has been dying to speak with you face to face. Don Atticus, please, hear what I have to say. I only need a moment. Whatever brings you all the way here. I came to help you. If you don't start going to class again, you'll be expelled from the academy, right? When the other kids at school and I were getting bullied real bad, you and the rest of the Team Star saved us. Thanks to that operation you carried out, we were all able to go to school again. If you got expelled for being the good guys, that'd be the worst thing ever. Forgive me. Haven't you heard anything from the big boss? Nay, we've heard not a whisper since that fateful day. Without the big boss, Team Star cannot carry on. And without the team, the bright and merry student life we seek lies beyond our reach. We have no choice but to defend our bases till the big boss returns to us. You evidently trust this big boss of yours a great deal. Who exactly are they? In truth, not one of us has met them in the flesh. By their own word, they are a recluse, as with the rest of us. It would seem bullying was to blame. That's awful. Though their name and face be unknown to us, they are nonetheless our precious comrade. Our only choice is to maintain our vigils from the bases, awaiting the day of their return. So that's why you don't go to school. But, but still, don't ever think that Team Star is all you have, Don Atticus. You've got a lifelong compadre in me, and don't you forget it. My compadre, I owe you a great debt. Aw, it seems we're one step closer to the truth behind Team Star's truancy and the bullying at the academy. More importantly, I can't believe I had no idea about these issues the students are struggling with. They have friendships they hold dear and reasons for acting as they too. I just couldn't see it. It's shameful how oblivious I've been. Ah, uh, I believe Team Star to be the one and tr only treasure in my life. Methinks I may have been mistaken. All right, well, a little bit of a bittersweet ending there, but 
another team star crew defeated only a few more of those to go as well we are really getting closer to the end of the game which is exciting so there we have it right back outside and i'm pretty sure cassia p is going to give us a ring again yep here we go got it zebra it's me atticus's star badge is now yours then i see now that its boss has been taken down, the Navi Squad's days are numbered. Now Atticus, too. Sorry, I've got a lot on my mind right now. So, Operation Starfall, you've taken down all but two bases, so it's fair to say it's going well. This seems like a good time to let you know what we're ultimately aiming to achieve. Our final goal is to defeat the mastermind that first recruited the five squad bases, or bosses, and created Team Star. The one they call the Big Boss. Who is this Big Boss? Who knows? They control the five squad bosses from the shadows. That's all anyone can say. If we defeat this person and get them to declare the team disbanded, that'll be it for Team Star. Since the Big Boss never set up their own base and keeps their identity hidden, I take it they're not one for the spotlight. But once all the squad bosses are out of action, the big boss will finally have the to take the stage. Now about your reward. I'll transfer some LP over to your phone, as promised. To be honest, with the big boss being mysterious, it sounds a lot like Cassiopeia. Maybe they're similar. All right then, so we get some TMs for a TM machine. Have your Pokemon learn strong moves so that they can continue to be a use for the, to the operation. My supply unit rep should be with you soon. All right, that's great. So I guess I'll be saying hi to Penny again. Uh, hey there, Zebra. That uh, sounded like a pretty serious phone call. I suppose it was. But guess who it is? It's Raiden again. Uh, I wasn't talking to you. Come on, Raiden just wants to say hi. Ah! So, that mastermind you were talking about, Cassia Pia's mentioned them to me too. Team Star's founder, the person who's caused all kinds of misery at the Academy. If we don't take them down, I'll lose what I treasure most in the world. What do you mean? Ah, uh, no, I just, um, that's right, you need your reward. Here, take it before I forget. You received a lot of Pokemon materials. All right, well, I'll be off then. Uh, oh, and Zebra, don't lose to those guys. I don't plan on it. So, I guess their treasure is at stake here too. There's a lot going on for sure, but for right now, it's nighttime. If we see any new Pokemon, I'll try to catch them, but I think for now I wanna grab this TM. And one thing I've been meaning to do for a good while is go back to school. We learned Toxic Spikes there. They'll use a laser tra a trap of poison spikes. Very, very cool. Um, we need to heal our Pokemon. There's a couple things we need to get to. So what I wanna focus on is zooming out here. You can see there's still quite a few things we need to accomplish, but I wanna go back to the school where we can maybe heal up and focus on a couple of other things, you know? So we'll go back over to the school, heal up, and take on at least a couple lessons. I think that'd be great. So apparently all we have to do to start some lessons is actually talk to you here at the main desk. Good evening, Master Zebra. What class would you like to take? Okay, so we do have a couple of them. I don't know if I'll do all of them right now, but we'll do like two or three maybe. You like biology with Mr. Jacques? Sure. Class will begin soon. Don't be tardy. All right then. So yeah, let's try out with some of these class lessons. I don't know if we'll get experience for this or items or if there'll really be any benefit to them, but they seem like they're neat. So I definitely want to try it. Hello, hello. My name's Jacques and I'll be your Pokemon biology teacher. In my class, we'll, learn, we'll all learn about the various quirks of our beloved Pokemon together. I hope you all come to love Pokemon even more from the things you learn here. In today's class, I'll teach you a great way to get to know Pokemon in more depth. If you'd like to become better friends with your Pokemon, you can let them come out of their Pokeball and walk along with you. Sounds great, huh? You can use the ZR button to throw a Pokeball and let out the Pokemon inside. Nothing cuter than watching your Pokemon run around underfoot, if you ask me. Once you let your Pokemon out, try speaking to them. They're sure to respond in some way. It's a great way to get to know them better. However, letting your Pokemon out of its ball isn't such a great idea in some locations. Can anyone tell me where it is that you shouldn't have your Pokemon walk along with you? I'm guessing um, inside of buildings. 
That's right, great job, Zebra. I see you did your homework. The correct answer is that we should not walk with our Pokemon indoors. How about that? Some Pokemon might damage walls, desks, and other things walking around inside buildings, so it's not allowed regardless of the species. Therefore, please only let your Pokemon out of their Pokeballs while outdoors. Okay, everyone? I think I see them out and about in classrooms from time to time, but still. Anyway, you may become even closer friends with your Pokemon pals by walking together. Oh, I almost forgot. Keep in mind that you can only walk together with your lead Pokemon. Remember, you use the ZR button to throw a ball and let out that Pokemon inside. You'll also want to remember that throwing a ball at a wild Pokemon will start a battle. Looks like that's all the time we have for today, so see you all next class. All right then, so I guess it just gives us different tips about the game and stuff. Maybe nothing too much in terms of like items and stuff, but we'll do, like I said, a couple of classes and sort of see what we learn from it. So that was a biology class. What else do we have? We have math. Ooh, Miss time. And personally, I'm a fan of math class. I know some people aren't, but uh, class will begin soon. Let's head over. Personally, I've always been good with math classes, but not too much English classes. Like, I just, that's really what I struggle with personally in school, but. Hello everyone, nice to meet you. My name's Time, and I will be your math teacher. Sorry to put you all on the spot at the start of class, but let me ask you a quick question. You enjoy numbers, arithmetic, and the like? Oh, Nimona's in class too. Oh my, <laughs> thank you for your honest responses. Some of you may like numbers and some may not. I think that's what makes a wonderful mix. But no matter your opinion on math, I hope you find yourselves enjoying our lessons together. I'll do my best to find a good way to match up your interests with all types of math lessons. Speaking of which, are you all caught up on your studies of Pokemon type matchups? For example, grass is strong against water and water is strong against fire, correct? Zebra, you seem to be good with Pokemon, so let me ask you this. Bearing in mind that water is strong against fire, if the move water gun hits a fire type Pokemon, what becomes of the move's damage? It is doubled. But I guess it's technically math? <laughs> That's right, I know I can count on you for this question, Zebra. Using moves of a type that your opponent is weak to is a super effective tactic. It multiplies the damage of those moves by two. On the other hand, using moves of that type that your opponent is resistant to isn't very effective. It divides the damage of your moves by two. <laughs> I don't mean to encroach on Miss Dendra's battle studies territory, of course, but I thought it best to, to use a lively topic as an example. That can make math fun even for those of you who don't much like the subject, don't you think? I guess so. Oh my, is that the bell? I suppose that's all for now. What a shame. I'm looking forward to seeing you all in the next class. I hope you're looking forward to it too. All right then, so we'll do one more class for today's episode. All right then, so this time we'll do history right over this way. So with Miss Rayfort. Cool to see all these teachers and sort of like get to know them a little bit more and also, you know, figure out their subjects and such. So we'll try out this one and see what we end up figuring out. All right, we're in class. Hi, Miss Rayfort. Oh ho, I see we have some new students here with us today. My name's, my name is Ryfort. Is it Ryfort or Rayfort? Maybe Ryfort. I will be the one to impart knowledge of the past to your little minds. History is a wonderful thing, truly splendid. The lives of our ancestors throughout history forged a path to the present in which we live. Today, you shall learn about the most mysterious location in all of Paldea, the Great Crater. As you are all aware, a massive crater known as the Great Crater of Paldea exists in the heart of our region. The area inside this crater is called Area Zero, and research of its geological strata and material composition has shown that the crater is in fact over one million years old. It was long believed that a certain something rested at the bottom of this mysterious crater. Aha, perfect timing to make eye contact, young zebra. Answer me this. What exactly was, what exactly was believed to rest in the depths of the great crater inside Area Zero? Treasure, a Snorlax, or a Pokemon Center? I'm pretty sure treasure. <laughs> that is correct. You are a surprisingly clever one, aren't you? I should see you did your homework prior to coming to my class. That's right, some believe that a treasure more valuable than anything else in this world rested in the depths of the Great Crater. Oh, you can see the, the what is it? The um, professor from Pokemon Legends Arceus on the screen in the back. That's so interesting. 
So much for dreams of treasure hunting, though, as a lab has been built in those very same depths. Oh, and before I forget, you would all do well to remember that the Great Crater and Area Zero are both off limits to all but those who have official business there. Do not dare entertain the foolish notion of gallivanting off to Area Zero in search of riches. It is no place for children dreaming of treasure and adventure. Besides, if it were at all possible to investigate the area, I would be surely the first to do so. Oh, is it that time already? I must have gotten swept up in filling your minds with knowledge. This ends today's lesson. We'll unravel more of history's enigmas together next time. So cool. So there's a couple of lessons for us. We'll definitely have to swing by here to get more of these done soon, because we learn more about the game and the whole world, and it seems like a lot of fun. I'm sure that the more we get into it, the more intricate they'll become. But with that being said, we have to find out where we're going next episode. I'm guessing we might finally be strong enough to take on this gym leader down there, so we can consider that one. But there's a whole group of them up this way, so we'll definitely have to think about it. For right now, I think we'll just set our sights on trying this one next episode, which I think is a psychic gym leader. Let's take a quick look right over here. The Alfrenata gym, the, um, it doesn't really say, hold on. The psychic type user right there. So that's it. We'll definitely try that out in the next episode of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.